So in certification team also, we are going to do what we call incremental, agile, frequent changes, but smaller. It's going to say you're not changing everything every year. We are not changing completely, throw out everything out of window and start all over again. Right. So That's you great. don't need to have a, a, a decryptor to <laughs> analyze like, oh, what did Cisco have before and what is the new after? And this is the level of transparency we want to build with yeah. our community. that. The, Certification is for the benefit of our uh, customers and, yeah. and our community. So we want to remove all those guessing and all those surprises and we want to be transparent. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble back from Cisco Live. Really excited to be back with Yusuf Baiji. Yusuf is the person I talk to every time I want to know about certifications. Yusuf, just for people who haven't seen our previous videos, who are you? And what are we talking about? All right. So first of all, thank you, David, for having me on the show. So my name is Yusuf Baiji. I am the director of certification program. So my team is responsible for the entire global certification program. So everything under the hood from CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, DevNet, wow. CyberOps, CCD. So you name it, we are responsible to design and develop all the exam certifications. So today we have a very interesting topic to cover and actually very important for yeah. people who are in the journey for preparing certification because I'm going to talk about some life cycle management, revisions, exam changes and all sorts of things. It's quite a big announcement. I mean, it, it, it was a few months ago when... Yeah, we recently did this a couple of months ago, but a lot of people are still not aware yeah. and this, this is another way to kind of, you know, educate and make, create that awareness that, you know, what's uh, coming on the horizon. So like behind us, you've got this thing that was announced where it's a big change rather than like announcing every three years that perhaps CCNA is changing. It's If I understand correctly, it's every year there's going to be a change. Correct. And then we'll go more in double click, deep dive in it. Like what is the change? Yeah. How is it changing? I have a few slides to show be because you can share that. it will help the customer, the students understand what we are doing and why we are doing that. Because sometimes it can be kind of a little bit daunting yeah. that like you guys are changing the exam every year. Oh, yeah. come on, you know. I'm just getting started. So trust me, it is for the benef benefit of the customer as well as the technology and the job role. And we're, we're going to explain that in a bit. That's great. So you got some slides, right? Yeah, we got some slides. So first of all, I'm going to pull up a slide which is about the certification lifecycle management. And what I mean by that is, you know, in any, any product that we have, in not only in IT, but even in non-IT, there's a, there's a life cycle, there's a process, an iterative process where you keep the program relevant yeah. to the customer, whatever service you're selling or whatever product you're selling, it has to be relevant. What is the hinge or what is the pillar that we hinge to? That is called the technology alignment with the job role. That's great. That is the punchline. Because if I'm going to test something on the exam which is not relevant to the job role and the expectation of the job, then why am I even testing you on those topics? Yeah. So we need to make sure we all know technology is changing very fast. Every year some new things are coming, some things are retiring and end of life. So we need to keep the program more relevant. Relevant is the keyword. Now, in the past, certification team used to make the updates, but it was like a little bit like uh, three years, four years, sometimes even five years. Wow. And by that time, you know, customers used to give us feedback that, look, you know, the, the topics that you're testing me on the exam, I don't do this anymore in my job. So, you know, you're, you're wasting my time. So make it latest and update. So now we have this, what I call the agile model. And, you know, right now agile is like the, yep. yeah, <laughs> the, the yeah. buzzword. So in certification team also, we are going to do what we call incremental agile frequent changes but smaller it's going to say you're not changing everything every year we are not changing completely throw out everything out of window and start all over again we are going to make minor nugget size incremental changes so that customers can adapt to it very easily things like 5%, 10%, we have kept the ceiling limit to 20%. That's great. So anything below 20%, a blueprint, let's say if we take, talk about CCNA, there could be a, a time that nothing is changing in the blueprint or there could be a time, oh, there are these two, three sections in the exam we need to update with the latest and greatest and 10% of the exam is changing. Yeah. So we, we don't want to rock the boat and, and disrupt the customer, disrupt the ecosystem. But the goal is to align with the new things that is happening in the industry to make it more relevant. I love that. So every year, a percentage will change up to perhaps 20%. But it's not a rewrite every year. Yeah. So yeah. if someone started the journey, it's not like they have to keep waiting 
or even rebooting or restarting. Yeah. So hypothetically, I started my journey in January. I, I started studying for CCNA or CCNP and I was reading books, Cisco Press. I purchased something. I purchased training material. And here comes Yusuf and say, oh, in the month of April, CCNA is changing. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, you know, it's the end of the world, do yeah. I restart everything? Yeah. No. All those elements and materials and training, they are all still continue to be uh, relevant. That's great. It's just that small change. So what we have also worked with Cisco Press as a partnership that they will publish addendums digitally. So if you purchase uh, a book, good. they will publish a new change online and you can download a PDF. That's great. So you don't need to buy a new book for the change. They will publish it digitally. Similarly, in the training courses, if you have purchased a course, they might publish a new chapter or maybe a, a two, three additional pages that, hey guys, you know, section number two dot three in the exam, they added this new thing. Here's a video, watch 10 minutes and you know what the change is. That's great. So this is what uh, the, the slide talks about. Agile revisions, incremental, and most important is the last bullet. Predictable. No more guessing. Yeah. The first question Somebody would ask, well, okay, when is the CCNA going to change again? Or when is the CCI going to change? Well, we have the calendar just behind us. And I'll walk you through the whole calendar on how to read it, what are the different quarters and which months. It is absolutely locked down. So now you can easily predict that in the month of April, data center exam will change. In the month of July, CCNA might change. All of that is hard-coded. No more guessing. That's great. So I wanted to walk you through the certification roadmap and the calendar that we discussed earlier about how to read this calendar because sometimes it gets complicated how Cisco publishes the calendar and what kind of you know uh, months to follow. So we use what we call Cisco fiscal year and Cisco fiscal year are different from the calendar year. So if I say Q1, the first quarter, that doesn't mean January, February, March. In Q1, in Cisco terminology, it's August, September, October. So please, that was the first thing that uh, a lot of people were confused about that, well, Yusuf, Q1, you said, and I was expecting January, but how come it's August? Well, Cisco follows a different calendaring system. So first thing is follow the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, all the four quarters, different calendar months. Now I want you to understand that if you are, if you are preparing, let's say, for data center exam, what are the three steps? The first step is that Cisco will take that portfolio, data center portfolio, let's say there is the data center core exam, there are concentration exams or whatever the portfolio is. We will bring in the subject matter experts and review the entire portfolio, whether it needs updating, whether there is a product introduced, there is a new software version, or whether a product is retired, end of life, we need to remove it or add it. All those reviews will be done in this quarter, somewhere between August, September, October. Once we finish reviewing, then the next step is we will announce it to the customer. And that is you, the community, the students, the people who are preparing for the certification. So you should expect an announcement somewhere in the next quarter, which is somewhere in November, December, January. Now remember I said, follow the color coding. So if you are doing data center in this example, first step is review. Second step is announcement. This is where Cisco.com will be announced that, okay, we are changing this exam. And then we are going to give you three to six months, depending on the track, whether it's CCNA or CCNP or CCA. Some exams will give three months notification. Some exams will give you six months notification. So the exam go live will be in the subsequent quarter. So Q1, Q2, Q3. And you see now it is green. As I said, publish the exam. So you follow the color coding, depending on whatever track, enterprise, security, data center, you read it from left to right in these three steps. So we move on to the next slide and I wanted to explain a little bit about the, the difference between the changes. So there are two types of changes that we usually perform. Like you mentioned, every three to five years, we have a major overhaul. Yeah. Right, we call it like a major revision. And what we are talking about today now is the agile revision, we call it minor revision. So the difference between the two and how to distinguish between them. So every blueprint moving forward will have a version number. Previously, this was done at the CCI level, CCIE Enterprise 1.0, CCI Data Center 3.0, there was a version number. There was no version number in CCN and CCNP but now we will. So now let's say in the version number, CCNA 
will be 1.0, for example, hypothetically. Now, if, for example, in three years' time, CCNA has to completely major overhaul, it will be 2.0. Okay. But in the minor revision, we increment the dot release. We say 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. That makes sense. So if you look at the blueprint heading and the title, you can easily tell that if this exam has been minor revised or major revised. That's great. And most importantly, like you were asking earlier, that what if the blueprint change in minor? I book, I, I'm booking an exam and exam number in the Pearson view, exam number is 200, 123, whatever. The exam number will not change. That is another advantage or kind of removes all the confusion because in the past, whenever Cisco made revisions in exam, we changed the exam number. Yep. So all the material also were disrupted. Cisco press book on the front page, there used to be exam number. Yep. In the training, there was exam number. Now that exam number is static, not changing. And will that never change or will it change with major revisions? Well, it will, for now, I can safely say it never change, but there might be some reason to change yep. and that I, I cannot think of an example right now, but for now, it will not change. So okay, the next great. slide I want to show is the comparison between what happens in major and what happens in minor. So some of the things I want to uh, highlight here is topology, for example. Will the topology change if I do major revision or minor? Well, yes, in major revision, obviously the topologies will change, but in minor, it's not necessary. Topology might remain the same. Hardware uh, models, software versions. Software, sometimes we need to upgrade because there, there might be some uh, bugs or whatever, yeah. but we don't introduce any new feature. In the hardware also, there's no new hardware introduced in minor release because we want to keep that momentum, that continuity. And the other thing is the notification. We also will cover in the, in the calendar behind us but we give customers three to six months uh, heads up notification uh, whenever we do minor or major announcement. Major definitely six months, but minor starts with three months. And depending on the track, depending on the exam like CCNA or CCIE, we give either three months or six months. That's great. One of the things I wanted to also highlight and we, we discussed earlier is that what is changing and what is not changing in, in this whole paradigm. What is changing is the blueprint numbering system. Before, we had this in the CCIE level that we had the blueprint number. Yep. That was completely unique to the blueprint, different from exam number. In the CCNA and CCNP, we never had anything like that. No. Now we are introducing what we call the blueprint versioning number. So the blueprint version number will always change to di the differentiate between the old and the new, whether it's uh, X dot Y, you know, 1.0 or 2.0. So that will continue to change. But the exam number will not change. Okay. So exam number will stay for life. And I can't think of a situation where we may need to change the exam number. But for the sake of, you know, sanity, like, you know, I can say safely that exam number will not change. It's quite a big change, but it's yeah. great. Another important thing is that with the release of any new exams and new information that we'll, we're also going to publish what we call release notes. Okay. And release notes will include the comparison of section by section, side by side of what is changing. That's great. So That's great. you don't need to have a, a, a decryptor to <laughs> analyze like, oh, what did Cisco have before and what is the new after? So we'll put two blueprints side by side. And actually, if you go to the website on the calendar, you'll see the data center release notes or collaboration release notes so, published. That's great. You'll see side by side exam number, let's say uh, N core exam or enter uh, core exam or concentration. What has changed? And we highlight in different colors like, okay, this is changing. That's great. So people can see an example right now. If exactly. they're studying for CCNA, they know it's coming. Exactly, exactly. And the other thing we are going to also strive to publish is what we call the learning matrix. Learning, learning metrics. Learning metrics. Okay. And um, what that means is basically some guidelines and pointers of what to study, where to study. So there are tons of resources. There's Cisco Press, there's training courses, there's Cisco Live sessions, webinars, videos like this ones or blogs. So we try to give some sort of a, like a cheat sheet of if you are studying for section one, here, go read chapter four in this book or that's go great. watch this Cisco Live presentation. So that's easier, a little bit kind of a, a, a kickstart for the customer. That's brilliant. I really love what you've done. Sorry, I, do, I just wanted to say it's, it's nice that you've taken the feedback from the community yeah. and you're helping us, you know, content creators, students, 
just the whole community. Yeah. It's so much better. Because, uh, David, the, the, the challenge right now is to keep relevancy in your job. Yeah. Like today, there's so much competition in the industry. Yeah. And, you, and, and any person who's certified, whether it's CCNA or CCIE, they need to prove their skills yep. to their, their employers and, and be relevant to whatever the, the, the job exactly. role is. Exactly. And if the certification is not latest and greatest, how will they show that relevancy? So this is the website we're going to definitely ask you to bookmark and, yeah. and visit frequently. It's not one time. Remember, it's a calendar and we keep publishing dates because right now on the calendar, there's only a month, August, July, May. But you want to know exact date. Like when yeah. is the new exam coming out? Is it on 1st of a calendar month? When is the last day to take the old exam, when is the uh, new uh, exam live get? So please visit this website, bookmark this, visit it frequently, cisco.com forward slash go forward slash cert roadmap. The dates can change as well, right? No. Or the they set in stone? St set in stone, but okay. the date is not published yet until the time comes. So we are so right month, now in the Q2. Month is the month is published. Okay. The month is published. That's set in stone because it's the fiscal quarters yeah. we follow. Yeah. But the date is still variable because I don't know. Let's say CCNA is changing. Uh, let's see over here on the calendar. Let me peek a little bit. CCNA is going to be announced in the month of May, June, July, which is Q4 of Cisco fiscal year. Now, it's three months, May, June, July. What date, you would ask exactly. me. Yeah. So keep visiting this page. As May comes closer, you'll see an announcement pop up with the release notes and everything that, guys, you know, CCNA is changing in uh, July. And then we'll give you three months notification and the exam will roll out in September, like three months after the announcement. Yes, yeah, so thanks so much for sharing and thanks so much for, you know, communi communicating with the with the community yeah, and not, not hiding it. I really appreciate it. Thanks. And this is the level of transparency we want to build with yeah. our community that the certification is for the benefit of our uh, customers and, yeah. and our community. So we want to remove all those guessing and all those surprises and we want to be transparent. So once again, enjoy. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for having me here at Cisco Live and enjoy the show. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you. Appreciate it.